Today we're going to talk about hip stability, how it's important, why it's a factor, and how ultimately it's going to help make you a better archer. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and we're going to make this channel a great resource to all types of archery. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'd appreciate it. So I've been doing a fair amount of coaching lately, uh, both digitally as well as in person. And something that always seems to be coming up, regardless of the style of shooter, even compound archers, recurve archers, bare bow archers, it doesn't matter. Just about everybody I've worked with has this issue. And it's a very simple fix on how to make your hips more stable. And you'll really see how your hips are tied to everything in relation to your shot, especially your foundation. And so with a really easy, simple fix, you can have a huge advantage, especially in the wind outside. So I've already said that it is part of the foundation or it can help make a strong foundation within your shot. And I literally mean a foundation. What you are standing on the ground with are your legs and your hips and your core, which attaches to everything else on how you help hold still, whether shooting compound, recurve, bare bow, doesn't matter. It all really is important and you have to have a strong foundation. If you don't have a strong foundation, how can you expect to be stable? right so if you have something that is a wet noodle and you're at full draw and it's moving around especially if the wind's blowing how can you expect to have a stable sight picture so if you have a really strong solid foundation it will lend itself to more stability and more resistant to movement especially when wind is blowing so that will directly correlate to an advantage while shooting in the wind so what i see as a telltale sign of uh, somebody not having any real core engagement any stability in their foundation is a disconnect between the upper half and the lower half of their body so while they were are shooting or holding the bow at full draw if the wind was to blow me from behind i would hinge together all in one piece like this right where my upper half and my lower half move together but people who are not stable will be at full draw and when the wind blows their upper half will bend independent of their lower half because they're not doing anything to tie the two together it's actually super simple and it's really not difficult at all and doing uh, the hip engagement will stabilize your lower legs as well as your hips and tie everything together with your core engagement now you can have a solid core while at full draw but if you're not tied into the lower extremities it really doesn't make that much of a difference you have to make sure your hips are stable I've already covered this in my form series for recurve archers and uh, the, using Coach Lee's method, the best method, the NTS method, or the NTS system, or the KSL method. Um, if you haven't seen my form series yet, I'll put a link in the description below plus a card at the top here. And uh, you can check that entire series out. I talk about this hip uh, stability in the uh, stance and posture video within the set position. Uh, so if you want to reference that, feel free to. So I'm going to show you how to engage your hips. It's actually really simple. My wife came up with this principle, and it works instantly for everyone. Um, I was doing this, but in a totally different manner, and I couldn't explain it in the way that is very simple that she came up with. Um, and, and it's as simple as this. Basically, what you do is you stand, and as if you are standing, try to imagine one foot on each square of a paper towel so if you have your paper towels you put one foot on each square and then you have that perforated line in the middle in between your legs and what you want to do is you want to imagine your feet sinking into the ground you want to tuck your hips under so it's almost like you're holding a like a penny between your butt cheeks basically and then after you do the hip tuck and your feet feel your feet try to sink into the ground and then you want to try to tear those paper towels apart so you want to tear them as if your feet were moving directly straight apart, not with your toes, not with your heels, not with the outsides of your feet or the inside of your ball of your feet. Flat feet on the ground, tear those paper towels apart. Now don't actually move your feet on the ground, just add a bit of tension to try to envision tearing the paper towels apart. And what that will do is it will lock and tie together everything in your hip girdle. It'll fire all the important muscles, all the stabilizers, automatically by just thinking of doing something as simple as that and then you want to keep that thing that that uh, tension that tearing motion from when you set your hands your hip your hand in the grip your hook your release on your hook your fingers on the string whatever it is 
that's when I do my paper towel tear and then I keep my tear all the way to the end of the shot. And you keep it until the arrow hits the target. Don't let it go on release because if you let it go on release, you're gonna be changing your tension and all of that as the shot is breaking, which is the most important part to the shot. So you really gotta make sure that you don't lose it all the way through your shot. People will tend to, as they're lifting their bow and they go to start pulling the bow back, if you watch my hips, they will tend to do this. They will move their hips as they are pulling the bow back. And even if they have an open stance, their hips are over their feet here, but as they go to pull their bow back, they'll turn their hips parallel to the arrow line, which is no longer actually an open stance. So you have to make sure you keep, keep your hips over your feet and then your torso does any rotation if you have any sort of open stance. If you have a closed stance, it's much simpler. You just keep your hips over your feet, but still have to engage that, uh, that paper towel tear motion. Now the question of how hard should you pull those paper towels apart, um, it's, I reference my intensity video that I've talked about many times, intensity. So how much intensity do you use to pair, tear those paper towels apart? So if this is zero and completely relaxed, and this is 10, I'm squeezing as hard as I possibly can, um, I can close my hand and make a fist with a two out of 10. So do it with a two out of 10, just enough to create the tension that is needed, but not so much so that you're overexerting and burning unnecessary energy. This is something that I've referenced many times in the past in many of my shooting videos and I've explained it to a lot of shooters that I've coached. Archery is about being as lazy as humanly possible. Do the minimal amount of effort to get your work done. So whatever it requires to get the work done, just do the minimal amount of effort because you'll have more energy throughout the day, uh, especially on long shooting days, long training days, long tournaments, or in high pressure situations. You'll be ready to go right away as opposed to lagging and feeling tired and all that stuff because as we all know, shooting 100 arrows outside in the heat can be a bit brutal. So the more energy you have in your tank at the end of the day, the better. So again, two out of 10. And like I said, first you tuck your hips, feel your feet sink into the ground, tear those paper towels apart, and keep that tension and that engagement throughout the entire shot until the arrow hits the target. And that is all you really need to do to tie your upper half to your lower half. Now. Like I said, an advantage immediately in the wind is going to be tying your upper half to your lower half and you will be way more stable in the wind. Uh, you can do this in field archery with even uneven like leg placements up on a hill. You gotta do this. You can still try to engage your lower half and tie your lower and upper half together. Um, so that way you have a much more solid foundation and that will result in a more stable shot, a more accurate shot, a more consistent shot, and better groups downrange. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button, the subscription button, and the notification bell. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, head to my website, jakekaminski.com, where you can find information on Patreon, apparel, books, and uh, digital coaching as well.